That's great. Well, today is uh, our patron question and answer uh, session that we, uh, we, these are all questions that we got from our patrons uh, in the, uh, the three PP hotline is what, is what we're calling it. It's what Daniel came (laughs) up with. So call like five it. five five Red Rabbit and ask your burning <laughs> art questions below. I feel like we should have a red button in our office, like Batman used to have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First oh, question. can we can we get that music? I would love music? to have that. Yeah, like every <laughs> before every question. <laughs> you know that was my that show just blew me away when I first saw it. And granted, I was three years old when I first saw it, <laughs> but <laughs> not a high bar. I Too remember, <laughs> uh, you remember early, you guys are, are 10 years older than me or whatever. So you remember late seventies, early eighties TV, right? Oh yeah. Which was black and white reruns of like Lone Ranger, Zorro, um, uh, Big Valley, uh, there was the Munsters and the Adams Family and Gilligan's Island and all that stuff, right? Speed Racer, Kimbo yeah. the White. And then Lion. on the on the kids front, like the cartoon front, you had maybe like Scooby Doo and uh, the Racers. What was it? Radical Racers or mm-hmm. is that what it was called? I don't remember that. I don't remember that one, but I remember you know the Scooby Doo and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then Batman was like technicolor just beautiful this amazing mm-hmm. show it was just it had a, an animated intro and i remember seeing that and i was just like i want more of this like animated intro stuff if they just did batman as a full on like animation that would be so cool and then the super friends came out yeah and i was like yeah super friends okay so that was like the the bar like you've got the super friends it's it's fully animated it's you know, it's maybe the best TV animation you could get at the time. And then what drops in like 1983 is Masters of the Universe with He-Man. And do yourself a favor. I know you guys may have been too old for that, right? Too old. Oh, no, I've been watching it recently. It's an insane show. If you haven't watched it recently, check it out. It's it's like an acid trip, I'm I'm (laughs) assuming. If it's crazy. Really, well, hold on. Let me break in. If you really want good He-Man, do the uh, the ten hour version on YouTube of the Concrete Blonde song. No. Yeah. <laughs> let me th- point out when I, I was the just watching. And I step outside and I <laughs> take a deep breath. <laughs> just watching the new the He-Man He-Man again from this perspective uh, as an adult. There's one glitch that I found in it. You know, He-Man is, the whole cell is that He-Man is this, you know, He-Man. He's like the buff guy, right? Yeah. The, prob- the, the problem in, in the character development that I see for that show, looking at it from the artist side now, is that it does not matter who it is. Everyone is ripped. Right. right. And so Everyone it takes down the pack. completely jacked. Yeah, there's no... No fat percentage there. It's like they're all bodybuilders. <laughs> Even the kids are ripped. Like everyone's ripped. Yeah. And so it doesn't it take away some of the some of the punch sort of that He-Man has if everybody's it, jacked? It definitely does. Like like his transformation should be from scrawny kid to like Right. you know, Conan, he's, right? He's he's right. just jacked in his normal life too. Like <laughs> But I think you know the what? term you're looking for is shredded. Shredded jacked. Do you know what do you know what the term ripped. is in the Parker home? What? Joinked. <laughs> what? Okay. Joinked. So, so what happened was um, my son's been working out. He's a swimmer. He's got an amazing body because he's 17 years old and he's an athlete, right? So, so minimal body fat, just sculpted form, whatever. And so he's, he's working out, right? And we were calling it, um, the, the term we were calling it was getting yoked, right? Okay. <laughs> You've heard that one. And there's getting jacked. And my wife was like, he's like, mom, I gotta, I gotta go work out. I'll be back. She's all, all right, you go get joinked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's just, perfect. Oh, no. That's perfect. Oh, no. <laughs> so She's that's reached what we've been full on it. mom status. Yeah, we've been oh, calling wow. that. Oh, wow. That's perfect. Getting joinked. Perfect. <laughs> 
Anyway, let's get to our first question. I just want to say, though, that He-Man, if you watch the intro to Super Friends on YouTube, look up Super Friends, watch that intro, and then back-to-back play the intro to He-Man and tell me you don't feel like jumping on the couch and like and just like ripping your shirt off after watching the intro to He-Man. <laughs> You'll be it jacked is like just the like The music them. is there. There's like strobing lights. He-Man <laughs> literally punches you in the face <laughs> at the end of it. It's... It's awesome. Okay. Can I, can I add one more little thing? Because I have yes. been having a lot of conversations about the Super Friends lately. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Here's a little problem that I saw. With, you know, it's it's fine when the show is about Aquaman and it's Aquaman's own dedicated show, like the movie or whatever. But mm-hmm. in the context of Super Friends, they have just random stuff go, go happen. And, you know, they're all there. It seems like each time it would be like, all right, guys, let's all get ready to go. And then Aquaman always has to chime in and be like, guys, is there any water? Is there any water around? Like, no, there's no water. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna stay back on this one because he's got no power when he's not right. in the water. Let me know if you need a, a, a dolphin. <laughs> fish needs to solve this. <laughs> They're like, well, there just, is a canal uh, that, that attaches to an estuary. If you could like swim up that canal <laughs> and take it inland. <laughs> Bring some snakes or something with yeah. you or something. Yeah, you know, <laughs> An eel. You know that ocean animal, the snake. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can, he can control all water animals. It's not just ocean, right? So he can go from the Mississippi all the way down to the Gulf. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of different. Yeah, that's true. A lot of different. A lot of different. That would be playing. interesting, a cool, uh, sh- to try to do Aquaman without water. Like... I'm just saying, you know when they, you know when they're all going to the thing, they're always like, man, Aquaman never really contributes as much. Yeah, it's kind of slack. All right, I was playing backyard football when that was going on. I think. Yeah, Will was living a life. Will was joint. (laughs) That's why he's joint. (laughs) He was getting joint. Is it joint or (laughs) joint? Could to it has a K in it. Joint. Oh, joint. joint. Can I read this first question? No. Yeah. Here we go. This is from Mimi Simon or Mimi Simone. When I was at school, I was aiming to work in an art department for an animation studio. And after graduating two years ago, I've gotten some freelance work for small studios and indie productions. Congratulations. That's pretty cool. However, after that experience, I've come to realize my passion is more in storytelling illustration than in designing backgrounds and props. However, I've had no success in either getting any book illustration work myself or in getting a literary literary or illustration agent. I suspect it's because my portfolio looks too much like animation, but I'm not exactly sure what needs changing and adding to make it more publishing friendly. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. You can see my portfolio here. I'm going to pull it up and share share my screen. It's great work. It's, It's this... Uh, Mimi understands uh, perspective, drawing, color, everything. Mm -hmm. But I agree with her. It's it's too animation for the children's book world. It's too slick. Um, It is so stinking good. mm -hmm. Hold on, I gotta go there. But But it's not a. It's not children's book art. You 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 roll up to this and you see. Oh man, this uh, animation, is, visual development, mm-hmm. like Kim Possible, and mm-hmm. so, that, but wh- but that's not to say it couldn't work. There couldn't be some publisher that's like, yeah, this is what we do. But I it's, think it's definitely she, more commercial. I think what she needs to do is find five or ten of her favorite children's books that are mm-hmm. that are popular, like with with big publishers, like what the big publishers are looking for, and not just you know. Not 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 children's books that were done by animators because there's a lot of those, you mm-hmm. know, um, but but children's books that are that she likes that are very, let's say, Caldecott friendly. Mm-hmm. And take your skills into that realm of more white space, more um, texture. Um, Possibly, it's gonna, more it's gonna be hard though because somebody who's this trained—I mean, she's total, total pro level animation style. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe that'll be actually a benefit now that I think about it. Maybe she's got the ability to be able to say, oh, I just need to change this, 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 like you just said. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how it's he... It's a total I, I, reinvention for the children's yeah. book world. The problem is you got to change your sensibility. It's not the drawing difficulty because right. she can actually draw better than mm-hmm. most people. Right. I've known two really, really prolific... Uh, prolific is not the right word. Somewhat famous Disney artists who have I've worked with because they came to my class at, at UVU trying to undisnify themselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't want to put their names out because I don't know if they'd want me to name them. But um, but both were very high up. One was in the Florida uh, Orlando office before they shut that down. And uh, it's been a struggle for them to to figure out how to to draw something that doesn't look like Disney because it's just it's like the way they learn to draw, you know. Yeah, it's it's ingrained in their hand. I will say this, this is a the folklore when I was going through school. So I'm not totally sure about this the authenticity of this, but um you guys know Craig Mullins, right? From visual mm-hmm. development. Mm-hmm. Amazing visual development artist and he and and he um has this real painterly style, really really artistic guy. And uh, he had gone through art center where I went to school as an industrial design major uh, and, and automotive design. And he had a really slick way of drawing and all that. So it looked very, uh, you know, mechanical, technical, but he mm-hmm. thought that it was too um, clean and he was, he was basically stuck in that style. And he went back to school and studied illustration for another three or four years mm. um, at in college just to, just to knock that out of him. So it took that much to knock it out. Now again, I'm going on hearsay there, but that's that was the what I heard about how he had to train that out. So I think it's a real deal. Like you get some of these patterns in your hand and head, it's hard to break them. Mm-hmm. There yeah. is another way. What's the way? The other way is no one can tell you no if you're self publishing. <laughs> you know, and so if you're making your own product, um. I have a theory that a lot of uh, the general public would actually love books illustrated in your style, mm-hmm. in a more um, animation style. The, the children's book, the, the gatekeepers in the children's book world don't like it. I, I'm going to yeah. agree 100%. It's rare that I have a full-throated 100% agreement <laughs> with Will. But the gatekeep- there is a gatekeeper kind of quality to getting stuff professionally published. And I know that I've had that problem. This is an interesting thing after doing what I've done as a career because sometimes I've presented dummies and all that. Oh, it's too dark. It's too European. It's uh, too somber. I mean, th- these are, I don't have like a Looney Tune style of drawing and painting. And, mm-hmm. and those are the critiques that I get from these gatekeepers. Then I go to an uh, art fair and people buy the crap out of this stuff. Yeah. They don't care. And I agree with Will that, that, that if Mimi put out a book, there's not a single parent to be like, no, this is too animation. I don't like it. Yeah. And I might say this, follow me on my YouTube channel, Will Terry, because I am trying to prove right now with this, with an ongoing series that you can make really good money doing a self-published children's picture book. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sharing the whole journey, all the decisions I'm making, all the sales figures, all the marketing, everything. And uh, because I keep suggesting this to people and I know that you know, a common response is, so I self-publish and then what? How do I sell the books? Well, that's what I'm going to answer on that series. Mm-hmm. So, I'm just looking at um, Penguin Random House's uh, children's books that coming they're soon. coming out within the spring or whenever mm-hmm. this year. And what you got is... I'd say the closest thing in her style might be something like, like this, you know, maybe, maybe the more commercial, you know, golden books stuff might work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you look at like traditional children's book stuff, we'll just look at these. You could see here, uh, let's, let's Uh, there's my buddy Mark Fearing. He's got a book. You can see out there. here how look at the background. Like it's Oh yeah. Yep. It 
it's just wonky. The characters aren't super, you know, nailed down. I mean, this is it's all beautiful and appealing, How but it's not that? the kind of nailed down that that she's doing here, you know. And then look at something like this. This is mm. real lots of texture. It looks like it's been painted with uh, you know sticks and primitive. Um, yeah, and I gotta like, say uh, that guy that guy has made a killing on that um, the series that he did with the was it a, like a bean or something? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. He just made a killing with that. So, I mean, we're just looking at three books here, but you can you can go here and see see all the rest of them. So, if you want to get work doing in your style, I think you're going to want to go more of this um, graphic novel level of mm. of type of stuff. Um, but the the children's books they are looking for a particular style, unless you're going to self-published but then that and there's a question later on that gets into that so let's move on to the uh the next the next question shall we good one i'm glad we were able to make that point because i I just hate the idea of a gatekeeper and a style Uh that they're like oh we're not doing realistic anymore so Mm -hmm. you know all that audience is now or that artist group is now cut out you know Mm -hmm. can't stand it yeah 